Okay, we are starting. So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for joining to uh, this GR uh, Climate Informative Reproducibility Challenge. Uh, we are very excited to, to start and kick off this uh, synchronous uh, meeting today, 2nd May. And uh, the, in behalf of the organizing committee and, and Alejandro Coca Castro, research fellow at the Turin, and we have as well here. Uh, the organizing committee members, uh, Andrew McDonald and Anne. And we are gonna today uh, introduce uh, some aspects of the, of the challenge as well as some technical, uh, uh, over, a technical overview of, of the technologies that we are gonna use. And finally, we have a session of speed, numbers, speed, uh, speed networking. So uh, let's start, uh, Andrew. Yeah, thank you. Um... So just a, a quick agenda overview of what today's presentation is really going to entail. Uh, the first hour, we want to introduce those who are putting on this challenge. So climate informatics, um, I'll, I'll talk about that organization uh, and initiative and the Environmental Data Science Journal. Um, Andrew Hyde is on the organizer committee. He was unable to make it today. He works with the Environmental Data, Environmental Data Science Journal, um, but I'll be talking on his behalf. Uh, Alejandro will talk about the Environmental Data Science book, where the contributions from this reproducibility challenge will be published. Um, and then we'll we'll talk through a little bit of the logistics and communications of this challenge. And we'll then take it over with a timeline and schedule, uh, and we'll have some time for Q&A. We'll take a quick break, then go into the uh, technology overview. We'll talk about Cisco, which is the computational framework we're using um, and computing resources uh, provided for this project, along with Jupyter Hub. Uh, which many of you may be familiar with. Uh, Alejandro will walk us through a quick submission demo uh, of the uh, to the EDS book to show sort of what the, the notebook submission process is going to look like. Uh, and then we'll have another Q&A. After one more break, we'll have a quick speed work networking session uh, for participants to know one another. And then we'll have everyone on their way. So welcome everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, uh, I'll, I'll talk really quick about climate informatics, um, which is um, an open community at the intersection of climate science and data science. It's been around for just over 10 years now um, and puts on an annual conference, the Climate Informatics Conference. Um, we just finished that conference uh, last week. It was in Cambridge, actually, this year, um, and I, I was on the organizing committee for that, um, along with uh, and Alejandro and Anne were, were both involved in, in, in attendance. Um, and yeah, so this reproducibility challenge is really, you know, here to try to grow this community um, and is supported by the climate informatics community. Um, so next slide, please. Um, just, you know, kind of the pillars of climate informatics um, were a group of both climate scientists and data scientists working to advance climate science using the methods from data science. So, you know, applying machine learning to things like satellite imagery and remote sensing, um, learning emulations of climate models these sorts of things. Um, we're a very community focused organization. We have a, a very active Twitter page and a Google group mailing list uh, where you can submit um, opportunities of interest, papers, that sort of thing. Um, and we try to help promote collaborations among uh, folks with similar interests. Next slide, please. Uh, the Climate Informatics community was founded, as I mentioned, about 10 years ago by Claire Monsolini uh, and Gavin Schmidt. Claire uh, is at the University of Colorado of Boulder, and I believe right now on a sabbatical at, in France, in Paris, uh, and Gavin Schmidt is with NASA. Uh, and today it's led by uh, the steering committee on the right there of Claire, Jakob, uh, Aniko, and Anastasia. Uh, and we're uh, actually looking for a location for next year's conference. So if anyone uh, has a potential connection for that, do reach out and let us know. Next slide, please. The conference has been hosted all over the place in the past. Uh, so it began in uh, 2011 in New York, then was in Boulder for a series of years, um, hosted by the University of Colorado Boulder uh, and NOAA there. It was then in Paris, uh, Oxford during COVID. Um, last year's conference was in Asheville uh, and Douglas Rao, who's with the North Carolina Institute for Climate Science, um, helped uh, co-organize that in Asheville. Uh, and then this year, as I mentioned, it was in Cambridge. Next year, could be anywhere. Uh, again, reach out if you have any ideas. Next slide, please. Uh, and this was our, our picture from last uh, week at our conference. So I think we had just over 100 attendees. Uh, so, you know, a relatively small conference compared to some of the other 
massive machine learning conferences like NeurIPS, iClear, ICLR, uh, or <laughs> iClear and ICLR, I ICML, uh, these sorts of conferences. So, so a lot smaller group, um, you know, really easy to get to know everyone, have, have some really close conversations and collaborations. Um, so do consider attending next year. We'd love to have you. Next slide, please. Um, and this was, you know, sort of the, the overview of what the conference looked like. So um, just if anyone's curious, we had a two and a half day conference with uh, keynotes from Shakir Mohammed of DeepMind uh, and Laura Zana of NYU. Um, and then we had a, a really diverse program of 10 minute talks focusing on things like risks and extremes, uh, downscaling, post processing, uncertainty and trustworthiness, XAI, data driven knowledge discovery. Um, these sorts of things. And, and we're thankful for our partners who have helped put this on and who are by extension supporting this reproducibility challenge. So um, thank you to them. And I should mention too, uh, these slides will be provided afterwards along with this recording. So if you wanna go back and look through these, uh, you know, for reference, you'll, you'll have access. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, the climate informatics community is uh, very active on Twitter. Uh, you can follow us at climformatics. Uh, and, uh, we'll be posting updates about the reproducibility challenge there uh, on our Twitter. So do give that a follow and consider turning on notifications um, as we'll, we'll be posting things. But more broadly, uh, it's a good account to follow to see kind of what's going on in the community. And we also have this Google group where um, we will post some opportunities, but you yourself as a, a member can contribute um, and post sessions you might be convening at workshops. Um, opportunities for PhDs and postdocs, these sorts of things. So it's a good group to be involved in. Next slide, please. Um, and with that, I, I wanna turn the page to the Environmental Data Science Journal. So as I mentioned, uh, Andrew Hyde, who is on the organizing committee, uh, represents the Environmental Data Science Journal at uh, the Cambridge University Press. Unfortunately, he could make it today. Uh, so I'll, I'll give a quick overview of what this journal entails. Um, and the connection is really uh, it publishes the proceedings from the Climate Informatics Conference um, and is going to help uh, promote and support this reproducibility challenge. So um, it was established, I want to say, two to three years ago. Um, and the, the editor in chief and founder of the journal is Claire Monteleone, who I mentioned uh, has been really involved in the Climate Informatics Conference. Um, it's an open access journal, so uh, very good for, for promoting your work uh, to a broad audience. And it's really the scope of it is really dedicated to, um, you know, any, anything in the intersection of climate, earth science, and uh, data science. Next slide, please. Um, just a quick overview. And again, this is more for your future reference when we show these slides afterwards. Um, the current uh, board of editors on this journal, you may know some of these folks. Um, we have representation from all around the world, from Europe, Asia, North America. Um, and always growing. So, you know, if you want to get involved, definitely reach out to Andrew Hyde. Um, I believe his contact information is on the website, but if not, we can we can provide that. Um, really great group of, of contributors and editors. Next slide, please. Um, you know, kind of a quick promotion. Why choose this journal? Uh, why is this somewhere you might want to consider publishing your work in the future? Um, you know, it's, it's a dedicated venue. So the audience uh, for this, Journal, you know, is, is very much at the intersection of climate science and data science. I know as someone who works in this space, sometimes it can be troubling to, if you publish in, in say, computer science, you feel like your work, uh, your contribution to climate might not be appreciated. And if you publish in climate uh, communities, you feel like maybe your methodological contributions from computer science might not be appreciated. So this is really a unique uh, kind of journal and, and audience associated with that journal. Um, as I mentioned, the editorial committee um, is very diverse uh, and has a wide range of expertise. So you'll get really good feedback on your work. It's open access. Uh, and so it's it's a great place to promote your work, especially if you're hoping to share uh, and engage publicly and do science communication. Um, you know, your, your articles are not gonna be locked behind a paywall. Um, a big focus of this journal and hence the existence of this reproducibility challenge is to facilitate open science uh, through open data, open materials, uh, open source code. And so uh, we provide a lot of uh, help on the editorial side to promote uh, and store your uh, data, code, those sorts of things so that others can access it. Um, you know, and really it's it's tied in, in close quarters with this climate informatics community. So it's a really, it's more than just a journal. We're hoping to build a community around it. Um, so. Andrew would have would have given a better pitch because he's the expert here, uh, but I'll I'll sub in today. <laughs> so next slide, please. 
Um, as I mentioned, this journal also publishes a special issue each year, uh, publishing the proceedings from the Climate Informatics Conference. So you can, you know, if you choose to submit to Climate Informatics, next uh, conference will be in 2024 with a submission deadline around January 2024. Um, the, the papers from that conference are published in a special issue of proceedings that go into environmental data science. But you can also um, publish just in a standard kind of submit anytime rolling review uh, manner with the environmental data science journal. So if you have a work that maybe is ready before a conference deadline that you want to put in, you can submit anytime. Um, we're still working on, on finalizing the proceedings for the 2023 uh, Climate Informatics Conference, but those will be out sometime later this summer. Uh, at the moment, the Climate Informatics 2022 proceedings, though, are live on the environmental data science website. Next slide, please. Uh, the Environmental Data Science Journal has a Twitter account uh, at NDataScience, Science. And so go ahead and give them a follow. They, um, they promote a lot of um, you know, the papers that they publish, but also content from authors and others in this space. So uh, definitely worth giving them a follow. Next slide, please. And I think this is you, Alejandro. Yes. Uh, thank you, Andrew, and hi, everyone who is online as part of this uh, virtual meeting. And now I'm going to explain the environmental data science book. That is one of the means that you are going to be exploring in, in this challenge. And you are going to publish in uh, notebooks that are going to be reproducible. And uh, you have a DOI target notebooks that people then can make citation of your work. But let me explain what the environmental data science book is in, in a broad term. So we describe EDS book as a living, free, and open online resource to showcase and support the publication of data, research, and open source tool for collaborative, reproducible, and transparent environmental data science. And so how we are aiming to achieve this kind of uh, like uh, kind of uh, like description through having people working in different environmental systems and these people are working with open source tools that uh, those tools are scalable and people can share the, their outcomes through uh, these Jupyter notebooks. In our case, we have all of them indexed in the Jupyter book. That is maybe when, later when we have the demo, I will go in detail what is a Jupyter book, but at the end, it's, we have the general audience of people, target audience of the notebook that they can start new ideas. So that's in general terms what EDS book is. Our mission is to educate and leverage good scientific software and data management practices among environmental scientists through peer reviewed, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, fair, executable notebooks. And our vision is to uh, is environmental scientists co work collaborative to demonstrate and communicate their science through fair, executable notebooks and have gained significant skills to publish in notebook-based scholarly publication system. Uh, maybe some of you are familiar, but there are many of these digital journals that maybe are that using Jupyter uh, notebooks as uh, one of the main uh, like like kind of uh, formats to publish, and you have more interactivity in the charts, and you can reproduce as well all the content in the future through this interactive coding code. And here I would like just with this is this is a, a, a kind of a illustration that I got from uh, from Taka and Terry, and essentially it summarizes what we're doing with Nobut. So uh, Jane is having a great war, and they would like to share to people and check uh, how that with this Nobut she can she can improve the the, the calculation of their war. So that's that's why uh, she's describing this everything as, as a notebook and in somehow what we are going to do in, in our challenge, like trying to describe, describe uh, tests with documenting our, our process to reproduce the paper, but we would like to uh, people to also explore the code and visualize our outcomes. And of course, all the notebooks that we are going to work in the challenge are going to be hosted in, in, a, in a repository, in this case, in the this book organization, uh, something that will cover in a demonstrator. And there are many tools that you can use now to uh, share these, these notebooks uh, online. And one of these uh, like resources is Binder. So this Binder, you only need to have certain configuration, configuration file and certain resources that made that available to share everyone around the world can run and can share your results and try to potentially 
try to recreate your, your own findings. So this is a general kind of workflow uh, that is, uh, you can read more about in this in Senado, but this is a general step that we are aiming to cover through this challenge. And essentially uh, that at the end, we are successful people are gonna read your novels and make citation of your novels. At the ADS book, uh, we are trying to follow a kind of, of of publication system and we are innovating in certain aspects. We have certain stages and you are gonna be exposed to these st stages uh, through the challenge. So the first one that maybe you read in the documentation, you should start like opening a notebook idea in the this group repo and, and it's here where authors that are the teams are start to uh, indicating what are the ideas that you have as a team and what we like to do and how you are reproducing the paper. And in my case uh, and others in the community, EDS book community, it will help the, it will, we will help you to validate this idea. Then we have a stage of preparation and here we have something that you will see later and you need to transfer a template that you are uh, using for the EDS book to the EDS book organization. And from that we can make in somehow ready to not able to start the review process. And essentially the review process is using something about JOS and JOS uh, journals that are uh, uh, journals of open source developments. And we are using this as a template to uh, essentially uh, review your notebooks. Then we have post spring where we are doing more like, uh, like some uh, some uh, testing and that the notebook, the outputs are okay for everyone, reviewers and authors. I mean, like some uh, proofreading and some, which are some proof to the authors and you will explain the process and finally publication. That is something that we expect to do in June uh, in the, uh, after finishing the challenge. Finally, uh, from the EDS community, maybe uh, you, in the future we have comments and these people from the EDS community can say, okay, you can improve the notebook in this way. And these people, if the the, the the contribution are very like significant, maybe they can be part of the citation according uh, to the approval of the original author. So this is in general the different stages and different auto different roles and where you are doing all this process. You will learn about that in the challenge. Uh, as I say, we have this website. And essentially, we have a gallery, and in this gallery, at the moment, we have ten notebooks that were already contributed by the community in different aspects, including data exploration, uh, more about modeling, exploring a model, more about uh, pre-processing data sets. All these kind of uh, topics that are covered here are uh, exploring different uh, environmental and uh, environmental data sets and models. And essentially, all these notebooks share a common uh, our standard template. All, all of them have a title, they have some tags, and they have these badges that you can see here, including one budget that is about the review. So people can check how this notebook they start from the first working version to the last published version. And very interesting, uh, we are using Rohu. Rohu is a platform that allows us to handle the information and metadata related to the notebook. So we can put in a single, research object, which is the reference of this notebook, which is the input data, which is the output data, and as well, which are the software requirements and people can launch the notebook in, in not just in the public binder, but also in the European cloud, European public binder. And finally, we have this other structure, all these notebooks, uh, we are checking that they're running over time. So it's not just one, once that you have this notebook working, we are trying to have monthly check-ins and we check that the notebook are running still because there are some changes in the in the software requirements, but it's something that we are trying to maintain in this kind of resource. Activities in the next month. Uh, first, uh, uh, we would like to increase the support uh, about and informing for early career scientists like you or like others that we have in this call. There are many tools out there, but we would like to let a guide uh, make a kind of guidance to the environmental data scientists, which are the tools that are sustainable and scalable. So we would like, we are working now in an issue, you are welcome to contribute, it's issue uh, uh, 154, and essentially we would like to map out, map which are the existing Python, Julia, and our open source uh, uh, software that are are setting in this, in this kind of, of, of features of scalability, and how, if they are, how sustainable they are. Uh, we are also running community meetings and this is a joint community with the Turing Way. 
Uh, we will have a, a spread about speaking about the Turing way maybe uh, in the third in the third week of, of this challenge and you will learn more about the Turing way and maybe we should overlap with this environmental and sustainability challenge and in terms of maintainers we have in meetings every second Friday where we will uh, discuss more important things about the infrastructure of the resource finally uh, we are working more trying to have more partnership with the environmental research network one of these is the climate informatics open education you will learn about the PTA project in the challenge and it's very interesting uh, education program of the Pangeo community uh, about uh, teaching Python open source for geoscience and we would like to be closer to the publishing ecosystem and support them and that's why we are having this partnership with the environmental data science journal uh, there is a future world that is now happening in, in terms of the notes now this is the future of the publication uh, format that I told you that in the in the future maybe you publish an article that is complete, completely interactable and it, this is being discussed in this initiative and in next week with Anne we are presenting EDS book at Jupiter.com that is the largest the user company of Jupiter developers and it's something that we would like to highlight what we're doing recently we released the version uh, uh, 0 01 uh, 0 01 and you are welcome to participate and to improve this version so in a big thank you to the community that uh, is helping EDS Boot. It includes Pangeo, Project Pitya, Jupiter, Turing Way, uh, Open Life Science. So far, the community, we have some reviewers and authors. We have uh, some working session, and this resource is being used uh, mainly and read it in the US and UK. But we have all visitors from other parts of Europe and, and, and Asia and, and, and South America as well. Uh, you are welcome to follow the resource, similar like climate informatics, uh, everyone is welcome to, to follow the EDS book account and also you don't like Twitter, uh, you have Amazon, we have Amazon account, you visit our website, we have all our input and, and output like kind of mirror data sets and data in, in a Senodo and we have a community there. You can visit and follow us there and the resource, I uh, welcome everyone to, to start the resource and try to follow the updates through this star in the Alan Turing Institute. You can find the resource there. Okay, uh, that's everything about the EDS book. Uh, maybe uh, now we are tra transitioning to something about the logistics and communications. Uh, so far, everyone agree uh, in the form to, to follow the code of conduct and it's very important that you understand about uh, uh, this. So we would like people to be in a healthy and safe environment and it's very important and everything now we are trying to enforce your data protection. So where possible in the public uh, online documents, don't share any personal data set because uh, this is, are gonna be public documents. Uh, main communication channels. So not right now, uh, this big bit meetings and also chat with the experts, everything is gonna be in Zoom as well the clinics. Uh, we have three channels that you can interact. The first one is the general one. That is uh, one uh, where we are making announcement and we are uh, having general questions. You or we already create one private channel for each of the teams where you already have information about your paper in the bookmark and as well a document where you can plan a discussion internally with your group. And we have one that is more for support and you can share the screenshots of problem that you have that is Repro Challenge Health. Uh, as Andrew say, uh, the, the official uh, account that is promoting all the activities is the Cl Climate Informatics Twitter account and EDS book and other accounts will be retweeting these activities, but the main one that you need to follow is climate informatics. And uh, this is about the notes. These are the public documents, online documents, where uh, I will share later, where we, you can have the, we can register certain uh, questions and answers in, the, in this public board. And you as well have in each of the private channel, you have access to these thin notes where you can make more general and more structured uh, discussion with your teams. And now uh, is Anne. Yes, so I will uh, uh, guide you through the timeline first. And uh, you have done the first step, which is uh, the registration. And uh, we have announced the team. Uh, and you all got uh, information via emails on the teams and the team members. And the most important now is uh, we are uh, starting the reproducible challenge. Um, so one important date to remember, uh, the challenge will end uh, end of May, 
but uh, the peer review will start 15 of May, um, and it means uh, we hope you will have something ready to uh, start a review. It doesn't have to be finalized yet, but uh, uh, we would like to have something we can start with, and I will come back to this uh, later. And the result will be announced uh, mid-June, uh, and the publication to the DS will uh, come uh, later in summer. Next slide, please. So uh, important uh, dates. Uh, um, so you have already announced, uh, uh, you know, we, in which team you are. We have seven teams and uh, each team is about uh, uh, between two and four members per team. And the outcome, as mentioned by Alando, is a peer-reviewed Jupyter notebook, a notebook uh, which will be published in the Environmental Data Science book. Uh, you have a pri private channel to uh, all the internal uh, team communication. So please use it. You should have the information about it. And uh, you have all the bookmarks uh, to the paper and the note at the top uh, of the channel. Next slide, please. So what do we want to achieve? We want to achieve reproducible. Uh, so you want to reproduce a paper. What does it mean? Uh, it means we would like to have the same analysis that is done in the paper uh, using the same data. And we would like to have the same results. Um, uh, so this is uh, this here uh, box here. Uh, what we would like also uh, to have possibly is uh, uh, something that is generalizable. So it means uh, uh, the Jupyter notebook could be reused later on for different research. But um, uh, this is a, a main goal. And uh, uh, of course, uh, um, maybe we will have something which is more replic replicable than reproducible depending on the size of the data. So as uh, Alejandro mentioned, we may need to stream down the data because when we publish the Jupyter notebook in the environmental data science book, we want to have it relatively small, a small amount of data to be able to use a public binder. Um, I think we can move to the next slide, except if I forget something. Yeah, okay. So the teamwork, uh, so the first uh, uh, working session, uh, working version of the Jupyter notebook you will uh, produce, we would like to have it on the 11th of May. And this is mostly to be able to guide you and to provide feedback and improvement. So it doesn't have to be the fully uh, reproducible uh, paper, uh, but it, it it is at least a, a draft, uh, which is well advanced of uh, all the different functionalities of the final Jupyter notebook. And this is really like the baseline for discussion and for the peer review that will start of uh, mid-May. Um, then we have on the uh, end of May, 26th of May, a catch-up presentation. So this is really very uh, informal presentation where uh, you can present what you have done and we will also uh, provide some feedback on how to present. So we will get a lot more information on the presentation later on in the challenge. Um, and uh, the final presentation will be on the 29th of May. Uh, and uh, the final submission should be on the 31st of May, uh, anytime on Earth. Anything I forgot, Alejandro, this? Yeah, no. Okay, so now um, something very useful for you during the entire uh, reproducible challenge, we will have uh, mini talks from uh, experts and we will start in week one with uh, Sebastian and they will talk about the open infrastructure. So he's working at the EGI Foundation, which is the European Grid Infrastructure. And we'll, it will talk more about uh, um, like the European Open Science Cloud, but cloud in general and uh, how we can leverage uh, uh, cloud computing and storage for uh, open and reproducible science. And week two, we'll have a series of uh, programming languages uh, talks. Uh, so with R, with Cesar, Python with Brian and Julia with Raphael. So all these uh, talks will be recorded. And then in week three, we have the reproducible and collaborative research, and we have two talks. We don't know exactly who will uh, give the talk, but it will be on reproducible publication, which is very close to what uh, you want to achieve with a Jupyter notebook and collaborative data science by the Turing way. And finally, on the last week, uh, you will have more information uh, talk on uh, open access journal. Uh, given by Cambridge University Press and Assessment. So all the talks are recorded uh, and uh, the format is what we have on the right hand side. Uh, usually it's about 10 minute slides, uh, a demo uh, which uh, can take uh, up to 20 minutes and then some uh, questions. Uh, I think uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, so we'll have different uh, um, 
uh, events. We have the speed networking events, and uh, the first one will start today uh, after this call. Uh, and then we have uh, some clinic and coffee dot drop in. So they are all optional, but you can come and uh, you can ask for questions. And they are uh, every Friday uh, between three and four UTC plus one. So you can check online what is the uh, uh, time in your time zone. And then on the last uh, uh, day of May, on the 29th, from uh, 4 to 4, uh, 45, UTC plus one, we have the final go goodbye and closure. So please use the clinics and coffee drop-in if you have any technical issues, especially at the very beginning. Next slide. Oh, okay, that's the schedule. Am I supposed to go through the schedule too? <laughs> Uh, I guess no one. I just I guess this already uh, was uh, shared in the email. But just to let you know that is uh, something that changed about this. Is like the Julia Esper is no longer available in the afternoon slot. It's gonna be in the morning. Uh, UTC uh, plus one time zone. But uh, as I say, this is gonna be recorded. But we really encourage uh, to participate in these meetings because uh, are very important that you have any questions. The opportunity to network with these experts and get answers. And maybe you are very interested to do something, not just in Python in the future, but in Jura and R, is your uh, opportunity to ask these uh, experts that are uh, well-known uh, developers in each of these uh, different uh, like uh, programming languages. Um, maybe also just to say that, uh, uh, that uh, according to the schedule, we just leave uh, uh, those ones that you see in yellow are very, uh, it's up to the teams, uh, how many hours per day you want to work, but we suggest two to three hours. And it's really up to the team and how you are, uh, your progress on the notebook. But very important, uh, please try to submit the first working version by Thursday, uh, 11 May uh, at midnight, because then uh, we need to prepare and have that ready for the peer review. So that's very important. So we have the extra day Friday to double check that your notebook, your first working version is almost ready for uh, being uh, and starting the peer review. Um, yeah, that's something I consumerize. This uh, schedule is as well available digital in digital version in Google Calendar. So you can as well add this Google Calendar to your personal calendar and have notification of the of the calls and optional. Anyway, we are also uh, sending advice at least for the optional session uh, as to your calendars or emails, if that's okay. And maybe you can have the reminder as well from us. You can decline if you cannot make it, no worries, it's optional. The most important one will be uh, the team presentations. And as I say, there are uh, certain catch-up presentation where you would like to improve the results. Uh, very important in the team's presentation, uh, this is maybe we, we will try to invite people from the climate informatics, from EDS book community and other open science communities to, to come and maybe be there in a very informal setting. Is uh, The most important thing, about, as I say in our messages, is to enjoy this opportunity, be exposed to open uh, source technologies, uh, enjoy uh, free cloud infrastructure uh, resources and, and, and try to come with idea that, as I say, uh, try to reproduce a paper is not easy, but uh, you, I am very glad that uh, very courageous people uh, take this uh, opportunity to try to reproduce environmental data, data science uh, journal papers. So yeah, 